Hello, my name is Kelvin Wong, and I will be talking about the Fibonacci sequence today. But before I get into that, I just want to give a little background about myself. My name is Kelvin Wong. I am currently a junior at Hillsborough High School, and I'm starting a series where I talk about different math concepts, theorems, really anything that might be interesting or useful that's math related. And so since this is the first episode, I want to start with something a little bit basic, and it's, uh, it's gonna be about the Fibonacci sequence. So I'll be talking about anything that's like, like how to form it, <laughs> anything related to it, any interesting theorems or concepts related to it, or patterns that you can find when you look through it. So to start us off, um, I'm gonna talk about how you create the Fibonacci sequence through the recursive definition. So you, which is the uh, most basic one that people usually learn about. So you start with two ones and you find the next term by adding the previous ones. So for example, this two is created by adding the one and the one. This three is created by adding the one and the two. And this five is created by adding the two and the three. So as you can see, every term is the sum of the previous two. And this sort of uh, rule or process or whatever can be extended infinitely to create this super long list that goes on until infinity. And uh, in this pattern, you can find all sorts of different unique properties, rules, just hidden in there. It's pretty cool. And uh, a good visual representation of the Fibonacci sequence is the Fibonacci spiral. So you start with a one by one square and with a quarter circle going through it. Then you connect it to a one by one square also with a quarter circle through it. Then you have a two by two, a three by three, a five by five, and an eight by eight. And as you can see, the spiral just connects into itself and you can extend this until infinity because like Fibonacci, this spiral will keep going on forever and forever until the first term is minuscule in comparison, practically doesn't exist. And yeah, just to show that this, that each one of these squares actually follows the pattern. You have this one by one, this one by one, two by two, three by three, five by five, eight by eight. And as you can probably tell, these lengths actually follow Fibonacci where it goes one, one, two, three, five, eight. So Fibonacci is found in nature. So for example, some plants follow this branching pattern where at each level, you can actually find that the number of branches follows Fibonacci. So they have one, one, two, three, five, eight, 13, and 21. And given enough time, this will keep going up and up and up. Obviously the plant will reach a limit eventually because they can't grow infinitely, but they will, some plants will actually follow Fibonacci, which is pretty cool that you can find in nature. Another example is that in sunflower seeds, if you draw out the pattern of these seeds on the sunflower and you connect these seeds in a spiral all the way down to the middle and you keep repeating this process in a very, very consistent manner, the number of spirals that you find, no matter which way that you count it, will always come out to a Fibonacci term, which is pretty cool. Oh, I should also probably mention that uh, that previous spiral that we created um, that can also be seen in nature. For example, like nautilus shells actually follow that pattern and snail shells too. Um, so previously, uh, we looked at the recursive formula as the very basic starting point for creating the uh, Fibonacci sequence. But to be honest, the recursive formula is very slow and it can get pretty tedious after a while. Like if I ask you to find the hundredth term, the hundredth Fibonacci sequence term, it would take forever to get there because you'd have to find every single term before it all the way from one to 99. And if I decided to ask you the millionth or the billionth term, it would take even longer. You'd, you'd be stuck there forever. But luckily for us, there is an explicit formula, which means we don't have to find every single term before it. So this explicit formula is also called Binet's formula because Binet is the guy who found it. 
and here it is, where n is the term number that we're trying to look for. So if I was trying to look for the hundredth digit, or the hundredth term, I would plug in n is equal to 100. Pretty cool. And this value, this number, 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2, is actually a special number called phi. And phi is a mathematical constant that's been known for thousands of years, all the way back to like the Greeks, who even worshipped this, calling it the golden ratio. And they implemented it in architecture and art, where they would make like columns and drawings, all following this ratio in length, because they believed it was artistically pleasing. And phi actually shows up in a lot of different places in different branches of math. And it actually shows up another time in Fibonacci when we're finding the ratio between different terms. So for example, I have the first couple terms written out here. And if I connect the first two terms to each other and I find the ratio between them by dividing the first one by the, or the second one by the first one, I get a one. And if I keep doing this for each other one, I can find their ratios. So for example, I find this two by dividing two over one. This 1 1.5 is from three over two, and I can keep doing this on and on and on. And as you can see here, these values are very, very slowly converging towards some final point. And if we decide to skip ahead, just skip all the intermediate terms and go to 300, the 300th 300 term, right? So this is the 300th term and this is the 299th term. And we find its ratio uh, evaluated to 126 digits. And then we look at phi evaluated to 126 digits. We can see that these two are exactly the same except for the last digit, which means that although phi is an irrational number, which means that it will literally never end and it doesn't repeat itself, we can find it with very, very extreme position by using the Fibonacci sequence, which is pretty cool. So if I wanted to go even further than just 125 digits of accuracy, say I wanted, you know, like a billion digits of accuracy, you know, more than, you know, we'll ever need, but like, if I wanted to, you could look at like the billionth Fibonacci term with its previous one and find their ratio. And you could find an extremely, extremely accurate value for phi. So another theorem that's connected with Fibonacci is called Zeckendorf's theorem. And it has two parts to it. So the first one says that any positive integer can be shown to be the sum of one or more non-consecutive Fibonacci terms. And the second part essentially says that every single number has only one Zeckendorf representation. So to put this in an uh, example, we have one, two, three, four, five. And I can represent this, its Zeckendorf representation is one plus 34 plus 33, plus 987, plus 10,946, where one is the first Fibonacci term, 34 is the ninth Fibonacci term, 377 is the 14th, 987 is the 16th, and 10,946 is the 21st. And now technically, yes, the one could be represented as either the first or the second Fibonacci term, but just for our purposes, we can only assume one, although technically, it would invalidate the second one, but we just ignore it because it's such a small dis discrepancy. So um, uh, another part, just to show that this non-consecutive portion can be satisfied very, very easily. If I were to split up this 10,946 into its component terms, which means that uh, 10,946 is the 21st term. So if I split it up into the 19th and 20th term, these two are consecutive. But any time that I have consecutive terms in uh, the Fibonacci sequence, I can always find the next term by adding those two together. So Zeckendorf essentially said that, hey, why don't I just make this even more interesting by adding this non-consecutive portion and saying that any time that you do have consecutive, just combine them so you no longer have them. So uh, another theorem or, uh, yep, theorem that, most of you probably know already, is the Pythagorean theorem, which is connected to right triangles and the lengths of the legs and hypotenuses, right? And from that uh, theorem, we create these things called Pythagorean triples, which are essentially sets of numbers that are integer lengths of a right triangle. 
So it has a connection to Fibonacci where if you choose any four consecutive Fibonacci terms, any four really like anywhere in there, it can be uh, shown, their product can be shown as the area of a Pythagorean triple. So for example, if I had five times eight times 13 times 21, their product is 10,920, 920. And 10,920 is the area of the Pythagorean triple 105, 208, 233. And this concept can be extended to any uh, four consecutive Fibonacci terms and you can find any or, or the, uh, the corresponding Pythagorean triple that goes with it. Uh, another connection that it has to the Pythagorean theorem is that if you start at five in the Fibonacci sequence and you count every alternating Fibonacci term, so like you skip one and then you count the next one, um, uh, those terms can be shown to be the lengths of the hypotenuses of the Pythagorean triple. So for example, we have 5, 13, 34, 89, 2, 33, 6, 10. And those all belong to a Pythagorean triple where they are the hypotenuse. Pretty cool. Um, another interesting math pattern is called Pascal's triangle. And the way that you build it is you start with a one at the top of the triangle and at every single new row, you draw ones on each side and you get the middle term by adding up the neighboring uh, values above it. So for example, this two is formed by adding the two ones above it. This three is formed by adding the one and two. This three is from the two and the one. This four is from the one and the three. This six is from the three and the three. And this four is from the three and the one. And once again, this is another pattern that can be extended infinitely. And just like Fibonacci, it also has a lot of really cool, interesting stuff hidden inside of it different uses, different connections. It's pretty useful. And I'll probably talk about it in a, in a different video. But uh, its connection to Fibonacci is that if you take this equilateral triangle and you push all the terms to the left, so it creates this right triangle, um, uh, and then you draw this diagonal across from it and find the sum of every single term that it intersects with, you can actually create the Fibonacci sequence. Pretty cool. So right here we have one, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen. But if we keep extending this infinitely, we'll get the in we'll follow the Fibonacci sequence. So the Fibonacci sequence is actually just one specific example, probably the most basic example of Fibonacci-like sequences that all follow this kind of rule where you add the previous terms. So you can actually create a lot more interesting or different uh, sequences by just changing little bits of the rules and creating, you know, new sequences, new series with a lot more uses, right? So for example, rather than just adding the two previous terms, we can create, we can add the previous three, which is where we get Fibonacci sequences. So for example, over here, we start with a zero, one, and one, and we create the next term by adding the previous three. So zero plus one plus one equals two. And then this four is created by one plus one plus two. And this one can extend infinitely as well. And it creates a whole unique sequence. Pretty cool. And this Fibonacci concept can be extended even further to, for example, Tetranacci, which adds the previous four. And this concept obviously can keep going higher and higher and higher, however many numbers you want to go. They also have Lucas numbers, which follows the exact same set of rules as Fibonacci, except that its seeds, which are its starting two numbers that determine the entire sequence, are different. Rather than starting with one and one, they start with two and one. And they also have the N Fibonacci, which is a little bit weird. Um, uh, for example, just to explain it, you start with a one and a three where this three is your n, right? And you find the next term by multiplying the previous term by whatever your n is and then adding it to the previous term. So for example, this 10 is formed by multiplying three by three and then adding a one to it. And this 33 is formed by multiplying 10 by three 
and then adding the previous three to it. And you keep doing this on and on and on. It's a pretty weird concept, but we actually do this in our original Fibonacci because our original Fibonacci is just a specific case of the n Fibonacci where n is equal to one. Because in that case, you'd be adding your previous term. You'd be multiplying your previous term by one and then adding it to the previous one, which is pretty cool. You can actually switch up the way that you calculate each term by multiplying. They also have the negative Fibonacci's. So nega obviously refers to negative. So right here you have your positive Fibonacci terms, which is just your regular basic one. But if you look on the flip side, you actually have these, it's the same thing as the positive side, except they alternate the signs. So for example, this is the first, second, third term. This is the zero term. And this is the negative first, negative second, negative third. And they keep flipping the signs of each one, which is pretty cool. And Fibonacci, this concept, not only applies to just numbers, you can even push it to words. So for example, if I had a B and an A, and I kept rather than, you know, you obviously can't add letters, but you can add them next to each other. So you can create the sequence where you have B, A, A, B, and you just keep creating new terms by putting the previous two ones next to each other. And obviously you don't have to use B and A, you could use like zeros and ones or ones and two if you really want to, but it's just pretty cool to see that Fibonacci can extend to even beyond numbers. So, yep, that's Fibonacci for you. It has a lot of different properties, different uses, hidden patterns, and yeah, I will see you next time.